Padma Archana Solanki. Here's the top story that we are tracking. This our former CEO of ICICI Bank, Chanda Kocher, and her husband, Deepak Kocher, were arrested by the CBI last night. The arrest is in connection to the alleged irregularities in a loan of over 3,000 crore rupees to the Videocon group when she was heading the private sector bank. Both Chanda and her husband have been produced in the CBI court today. The CBI has demanded their custody for three days. All right, uh, my colleague Santhya Gora is uh, joining us uh, from the special CBI court. Uh, Santhya, thank you for joining us. Uh, marathon arguments from both sides. Uh, what is the latest uh, that you can share with us? So talking about... Uh the what's happening or what happened in the court today archana so cbi when cbi made the arrest yesterday cbi's claim was that because of the non cooperation on behalf of this and this is cbi's claim on behalf of coach, the coacher couple cbi had no other option but to make the arrest now when the matter was argued in the court today cbi repeated its claim but countering that claim advocate amit desai who is representing the coachers in the court said a couple of things and this was uh, for his first claim was that on what ground CBI is claiming non-cooperation because when the FIR was filed in January 2019, since then only it was in July 2022 that CBI summoned the coacher couple for the first time and coacher couple appeared before CBI and uh, and after that, it was in December that the coacher couple was summoned. It was 19th of December. Coacher couple requested that they should be uh, given a time of two to three days. And on 23rd of December, which is yesterday, coacher couple appeared before the CBI. So according to defense, and that is what uh, Advocate Desai argued in the court, Rachna, that where is the non-cooperation part? Second, he said that if he... Uh, because he briefly touched the merits of the case because uh, his main contention was... Uh, to claim the arrest to be an illegal one. So talking about the merits of the case, he said that it is unfair to say that uh, huge losses and wrongful losses were caused to ICICI Bank because all these said loans were repaid. So there's no question of ICICI Bank facing any losses. Apart from that, Advocate Amit Desai also spoke uh, up about the further part of uh, this procedure. So considering Chanda Kochar is a public servant, Prevention of Corruption Act comes into picture, and that was one of the that is one of the sections in CBI's FIR as well, uh, Archana. So, defence argued that under Section 17A of Prevention of Corruption Act, which means that in order to uh, arrest any public servant, the agency will have to seek permission from the competent authority. So that was not done. There was a violation on that. That was defence's claim. But CBI claimed in the court. All right, Sandhya, my apologies. I'll have to cut you short. We're getting the big update here. Uh, CBI has got three days uh, custody of uh, Chanda Kochar and Deepak Kochar. This is the big update uh, that we are uh, getting on uh, this uh, broadcast. Uh, remember, uh, both sides, the defense and uh, the CBI, had made their arguments in the court uh, where uh, the defense had said that this arrest is illegal. And it also questioned the timing of the arrest, uh, whereas uh, the CBI said uh, that uh, the couple was not cooperating. Eventually, they did say that uh, Vyandhu did cooperate in the probe. Uh, but the big update that we are getting you on the broadcast is that CBI has got the three-day custody of uh, Chanda Kochar and uh, Deepak Kochar. Santhya, back to you. Hi. Santhya, if you can hear me, that is the big update that we are breaking on the broadcast. Uh, CBI has got uh, three-day custody of Chanda Kochar and uh, Deepak Kochar. You were making a point about the arguments that were made in the court. Yes, absolutely, Archana. So before the argument started, we spoke to uh, the team representing CBI and the team told us that they are planning to seek only a three days custody. And after that, once the argument started, officially the public prosecutor uh, requested the court to grant a three days custody. That was obviously opposed by uh, the defense. But now the court has granted a three days custody to CBI. Uh, if we talk about the background of the case, Archana, in fact, ED also uh, is investigating this case. ED is looking into the PMLA part of it, the money laundering part of it. So uh, ED also arrested Deepak Kocher, Chanda Kocher's husband, in September 2020. After six months, he was granted a bail talking about uh, v uh, Venugopal, Dhut and Chanda Kocher because they are also, uh, and they are also named as accused in ED's case. 
both of them uh, they produced uh, they got a uh, uh, they, they appeared before the court and they secured a bail bond at that time so both of them were not arrested now talking about the kochar couple here in cbi's case defense actually made an argument stating that if it has to be believed that there is an alleged fraud if cbi believes that there is a fraud which has happened why exactly the beneficiary of those 2 to 3100 crore rupees is not arrested by the agency by that defense meant venu gopal dhut why is he not arrested and why the kochar couple uh, cbi uh, on the other hand public prosecutor while arguing on cbi's behalf said that uh, venu gopal dhut was cooperative uh, he participated in the investigation and answered all the questions to cbi satisfaction that is why there was no need of uh, arrest but talking about the kochar couple public prosecutor once again repeated that there was uh, when the kochar couple was confronted with fresh evidences they were unable to uh, uh, unable to clarify those uh, uh, those evidences those documents because when defense argued its case archana court specifically asked the public prosecutor that what do you mean by non cooperation to that cbi uh, public prosecutor who was uh, representing cbi said that in our case it was mandatory we are as in cbi is not looking into the money laundering aspect of it so comparing these two case is not the right way to go uh, ED is looking into the money laundering aspect of it but we are looking into the criminal conspiracy prevention of corruption and crim uh, and uh, other cheat and cheating aspect of it so that was the explanation given by CBI to the court archana right asanthi there are two things that i would like to uh, i would like your clarification on one is that the defense has asked uh, questions on the arrest the timing of the arrest the defense says that from january 2019 till now the couple was available but there was no question of their arrest why are they being arrested now they have questioned the arrest uh, what is the cbi's clarification their argument on this and the second one uh, what is the white watertight case that the cbi is trying to build against the coaches what are their allegations as far as the fir is concerned so archana first uh, let me answer your second question first this is the case cbi is trying to build uh, so cbi started conducting a preliminary inquiry uh, in december 2017 after conducting this inquiry for over one year it was in january 2019 that cbi filed its fir now cbi's case is this that while chanda kochar was at the helm of the icic bank there were at least six high value loans which were sanctioned and which were dispersed to the uh, by the icic bank to various companies of the videocon group and according to uh, cbi there is a quid quid pro quo there talking about those six loans cbi says that out of those six uh, loan six high value loan uh, committees those the, the committees which san, uh, sanctioned those loans two committees were actually uh, the ones where chanda kochar herself was a member uh, she was a member of those two sanctioning committees and she according to cbi wrongfully she misused her position and wrongfully dispersed uh, those loans now cbi's main case is actually about one of that loan uh, which is of rupees 300 crore so it was on 7th of september 2009 archana that a loan of rupees 300 crore was disbursed by the icici bank to videocon international now according to cbi immediately that's the very next day on 8th of september videocon group videocon international transfers gives a loan of rupees 64 crore to a firm called new power which is actually uh, held which is which belongs to chanda kochar's husband deepak kochar and according to cbi and this is cbi's case that the reason this loan was given was because of the quid pro quo angle which is there and chanda kochar misused her position as the md and ceo of the bank while granting those loans to videocon because according to cbi those were first unsecured loans second there was a violation of rbi guidelines credit policies of the bank uh, while granting those loans so that is why uh, cbi says that because chanda kochar decided to oh and this is cbi's case archana uh, this is what this is what the fir says that uh, because chanda kochar overlook uh, because those loans were granted to videocon uh, and those 
the violations were uh, because when Chanda Kochar and ICICI Bank disposed those loans to the Videocon Group and those RBI, uh, RBI guidelines uh, and bank's credit policy was not uh, followed in exchange of that those 64 crore rupees were transferred to new power chanda coach's husband's firm so that is cbi's case now talking about your first uh, question cbi in the entire hearing maintained only one thing that there was non cooperation the coacher couple despite uh, asking uh, despite being confronted with the new evidence new documents did not cooperate with the investigating agency that's why cbi didn't have any other option but uh, to arrest them. So that was the only argument of the investigating agency today while seeking the remand of the coacher couple. Archana. All right. Uh, thank you, Sandhya, for getting us uh, those updates. The big headline is that the CBI has uh, got three day custody of uh, Chanda Kocher and Deepak Kocher in this case. Uh, both sides made fierce arguments, uh, defense saying uh, that uh, this, this, this arrest is illegal, uh, illegal and uh, that uh, the timing of the arrest is also a very, very uh, questionable aspect of this entire development. Uh, shifting focus to the other big story that we are tracking, that is the cabinet has announced a series of important decisions. To begin with, it has revised the one rank, one pension scheme for retired army personnel at an estimated additional annual expenditure of 8,400 50 crore rupees armed forces personnel who retired before 30th of June 2019 uh, will be covered under this revision. Eligible recipients will receive arrears for a period between 1st of July 2019 to 30th of June 2022. The revision will benefit over 25 lakh armed forces pensioners. In another major decision, the cabinet approved minimum support price for COPRA for the 2023 season. The MSP has been fixed at 10,860 rupees per quintal for fair average quality of milling COPRA and at 11,750 rupees per quintal for ball COPRA. This decision is aimed at ensuring better remuneration returns to the coconut growers and improve their welfare. The highlight of yesterday's decisions is the merging of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana that was started in 2020 during COVID with the National Food Security Act. After this, more food grains will be made available free of cost to more than 800 million beneficiaries till December 2023 under National Food Security Act. Sapna Das is here with the details. Sapna, what is the fiscal impact of this decision? Well, finally, the government has been able to take a call in allowing the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana to actually sunset December 31. From Jan 1, the new regime under NFSA or other uh, free food grains via PDS, uh, you know, that will get operationalized from Jan 1 onwards the entire calendar year. The government upfront has given the uh, estimated food subsidy arising out of that, and that's two lakh odd crores. Uh, now, we are given to understand that the additional cost because of food grains going free uh, under PDS from Jan 1 is likely to be 20 to 25 odd thousand crores for the entire calendar year. Uh, you know, this is significantly lower than whatever additional costs the government has incurred in terms of higher food subsidy bill due to the PMGKY extensions. Uh, that's one. The second significant part, of course, is that even this 20 to 25 odd thousand crores, which is hardly 0.1% of the GDP, uh, has been included in the 2 lakh crore estimate given out by the government. So I think uh, there is uh, there is room for ample fiscal savings for the government. I think that's going to fare very well in terms of managing the food subsidy as well as taking care of the weaker se sections of society. All right. Uh, thank you, Sapna, for uh, those updates. Uh, with that, it's time for a short break. When we return, we'll get you the latest on Reliance Capital. Race for Reliance Capital gets fierce. Torrent Investments... Welcome back on to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. The race for Reliance Capital is getting heated up. We learn that Torrent Investments has written to the Reliance Capital administrators in protest of Hinduja Global's revised bid for the debt-ridden company. Remember, Torrent had emerged as the highest bidder in auction for Reliance Capital's resolution process. But Hinduja surprised with a revised higher offer subsequently topping Torrent's proposal. Now, Torrent says that consideration of the new offer is in violation of the entire process. Ritu joins us with more. Ritu, what is the latest that you can share with us? That's right, Archana. Uh, you know, uh, Torrent has now raised an objection to the higher offer that has come in from Hinduja uh, outside of the e-auction process that was concluded. Remember, we reported earlier that Hinduja, uh, Torrent actually had emerged as the highest bidder in the e-auction realm with an offer of 8,640 crores 
Sindhuja was the second highest at the time with 8,110 crores of an offer. But, you know, after the auction concluded and Torrance was given a letter by the uh, lenders and administrator affirming that they had indeed made the highest bid, Sindhuja submitted a revised offer with an NPV of close to 9,000 crores, which includes 8,800 crores in cash, and that is certainly higher than any other offer that Reliance Capital had received so far. So objecting to this, Torrent has now written to the administrator of Reliance Capital, saying that this uh, accepting a revised offer after the e-auction has concluded would be in violation of the IBC process. And they've said that they want an immediate confirmation from both the administrator and the COC that such an offer will not be accepted uh, and that it is, uh, you know, uh, illegal for the COC to de- do so. They also reiterated that, uh, you know, in a December 17th call, they had specifically raised an issue uh, with regards to any revised bids being accepted after the process was closed. And they were reassured that that would not be done. And now that this has happened, uh, you know, they're just seeking a reassurance that the revised offer will not be conducted. And the COC will stand by the fact that the sanctity of the e-auction will be maintained and Torrance offer will be considered. All right. Uh, thank you, Ritu, for those updates. All right, moving on, as COVID infections across China and other countries continue to rise, India's health ministry has made RT-PCR tests mandatory for international travelers arriving from countries like China, Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong and Thailand. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia has said that any passenger from these countries who is either found symptomatic or tests positive for COVID will be quarantined. Chin, Japan... दक्षिण कोरिया हांगकांग बैंकॉक सभी से आने वाली फ्लाइट पर हम एविएशन मिनिस्ट्री के साथ बातचीत करके तुरंत ही एयर सुविधा पोर्टल का इम्प्लीमेंटेशन करके सभी पैसेंजर को आरटीपीसीआर कंपलसरी करेंगे उसका ट्रेसिंग करना चालू कर देंगे और इंडिया में आने के बाद किसी को बुखार मालूम पड़े या तो टेस्ट पॉजिटिव पाया जाए तो तुरंत ही हम उसको क्वारंटाइन करने के लिए भी आदेश जारी करने जा रहे हैं मीनवाइल द हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री हैज आल्सो डायरेक्टेड ऑल स्टेट्स टू मेंटेन एन एडिक्वेट सप्लाई ऑफ ऑक्सीजन एंड लाइफ सपोर्ट इक्विपमेंट इन अ लेटर द मिनिस्ट्री हैज सेड दैट ऑल कंसर्न डिपार्टमेंट्स मस्ट इंश्योर दैट पीएसए प्लांट्स आर केप्ट फुली फंक्शनल एंड रेगुलर मॉक ड्रिल्स आर बीइंग कंडक्टेड टू चेक देम In other national headlines, tragic news coming in from Bihar when nine people lost their lives after an explosion took place at a brick kiln in the state's Motihari district. The incident took place after a chimney of the brick kiln exploded. The injured have been hospitalized. Prime Minister Modi has announced a compensation of 2 lakh rupees to the next of the kin of each deceased and 50,000 rupees for the injured. US President Joe Biden has nominated Indian American lawyer diplomat Richard Verma to a top diplomatic position in the US State Department. Verma has previously served as US ambassador to India from 2015 to 2017 and is currently the chief legal officer and head of global public policy at Mastercard. Once confirmed by the Senate, he would serve as the Deputy Secretary of State for Management and Resources, making him the highest ranking Indian American in the State Department. And uh, with that it's a wrap uh, thank you for watching but don't go anywhere news continues on the other side